A beast prowls the ancient grasslands in the shadowy depths of primordial South America, terrifying its prey. Its extended body is clothed in smooth, dense fur, allowing it to blend in with the darkness and give it a terrifying profile that sends chills down your spine. But what really distinguishes it are its enormous jaws, which are ready to savagely inflict death with each bite. It was none other than Thylacosmolus, the frightening figure from folklore. Thylacosmolus was a medium-sized mammalian predator that stood 2.3 feet tall at the shoulder and was 4 to 5 feet in length from nose to tail. It had a strong muscular frame that gave it an imposing, commanding appearance. Thylacosmolus was comparatively smaller than other saber-toothed carnivores of the time, like the Smilodon. Its unusual combination of characteristics, notably its strong jaws and long canines, still made it a fearsome predator. Thylacosmolus stood apart from other predators of its era thanks to its distinctive body composition. It had a robust muscular body that suggested a powerful and strong frame. It shared certain characteristics with a big cat, but it also exhibited special traits that set it apart as a marsupial predator. Compared to its contemporaries, Thylacosmolus had a low-slung body that suggested a more ground-hugging position. Its posture and strong limbs most likely helped it maintain its stability and agility during quick movements and sudden changes in direction. This versatility would have been useful for sneaking up on and chasing after prey. Thylacosmolus had an unusually long, narrow head that resembled a marsupial. Although it possessed a small brain case, the dentition that was stored inside it was its most notable characteristic. Thylacosmolus had a physique that combined power, agility, and specialized teeth showcasing that it was an effective predator. One of Thylacosmolus' most remarkable characteristics was its skull, which combined characteristics of both marsupials and saber-toothed cats. It was distinguished from other predators of its era by the peculiar anatomy of its skull. The magnificent dentition of Thylacosmolus' head was one of its most prominent features. Thylacosmolus had two enormous canine teeth that protruded from the mouth and were located in the upper jaw. These dogs were genuinely amazing. They looked like long, flat sabers. They had jaws that could deliver lethal bites and were uniquely specialized for capturing and eliminating animals. Thylacosmolus had canines that were lengthy and had serrations on the edges. This serration probably helped in slicing through flesh, making it simpler to render prey unconscious. These canines' exact lengths fluctuated, with some specimens reaching a length of 6.7 inches. Thylacosmolus had a set of tiny teeth behind the canines in addition to the formidable canines. Although less noticeable, these teeth were nonetheless effective and probably helped the animal grab and break apart its meal. Thylacosmolus has a long, narrow snout that contributed to its unusual look. Although the particular function of this snout form is unclear, it may have helped the creature's overall hunting plan. Thylacosmolus is thought to have been an ambush predator using its long fangs and strong bite force to inflict lethal blows on its gullible prey. Thylacosmolus was able to strike its prey with swift and accurate death bites thanks to its short snout, strong jaws, and long saber-like fangs. Thylacosmolus probably used its teeth to quickly immobilize or kill its prey by aiming at crucial places like the throat or neck. Thylacosmolus would have been able to pierce deep into its prey's skin thanks to its amazing length and power, possibly severing vital blood arteries or inflicting serious wounds. Thylacosmolus had strong limbs that added to its overall effectiveness as a predator. Sharp, retractable claws on both its forelimbs and rear limbs let it successfully seize, subdue, and manipulate its victim. Thylacosmolus had strong, muscular forelimbs. They had keen claws that they probably utilized to grab and hold on to their prey. Thylacosmolus would have been able to keep control during stressful battles with fighting victims thanks to its powerful claws, which would have given it a firm grasp. The rear limbs of Thylacosmolus were likewise well-developed and were essential for both mobility and hunting. These strong hind limbs gave the animal agility, speed, and the capacity to leap or pounce with great force when ambushing prey. Thylacosmolus was able to overwhelm its unsuspecting prey with the help of its quick, precise attacks and powerful rear limbs and keen claws. It is significant to notice that Thylacosmolus's claws are retractable. Thylacosmolus probably possessed the ability to freely extend and retract its claws, just like contemporary cats do. This would have prevented needless damage and kept the claws sharp and prepared for use when necessary. 
Thylacosmolus's powerful claws on both its forelimbs and its hind limbs, which served as traction and stability during quick movements and sudden changes in direction, as well as help in the capture and immobilization of prey. Since no direct traces of Thylacosmolus's fur have been preserved, its exact color and pattern are unclear, but it is frequently pictured as having tawny or reddish-brown fur, which is more like the coloring of many contemporary huge cats. The long, muscular tail of Thylacosmolus served as a counterweight and added instability and maneuverability during quick movements. Thylacosmolus would have needed exceptional balance and stability during rapid movements, swift turns, or while leaping upon prey because it was an agile and possibly fast-moving predator. The predator's long tail served as the required counterweight, enabling it to maintain stability and carry out precise motions without wobbling. Now let's talk about the climate conditions during which these creatures flourished. Thylacosmolus flourished roughly 13 million years ago, throughout the late Miocene and early Pliocene epochs. The Earth underwent a variety of climate shifts and circumstances during this time, which had an impact on the habitats and ecosystems in which Thylacosmolus flourished. Thylacosmolus lived largely in Argentina, Uruguay, and Brazil, which are currently parts of South America. Throughout its life, the specific climate conditions changed, but generally speaking, the region experienced a relatively warm and varied environment. A mix of wooded areas, open grasslands, and shrublands characterized South America's climate throughout the late Miocene with seasonal changes with certain locations experiencing a wetter or drier environment based on local circumstances, the region typically had a warm and humid climate. Thylacosmolus was able to live and hunt in a variety of habitats thanks to this diversified habitat. Thylacosmolus was a predatory predator whose main food source was animal flesh. Understanding its hunting tactics and the kinds of prey it probably hunted is possible thanks to its dental and cranial modifications. Thylacosmolus probably hunted in an ambush-style fashion, using its stealth, speed, and tremendous bite force to dispatch its prey. Before making a surprise, deadly attack on unwary herbivores, it might have camouflaged itself in plants or utilized its surroundings to get near to them. Talking about their reproduction, Thylacosmolus is thought to have had separate male and female offspring and reproduced sexually. Thylacosmolus would have mated during particular breeding seasons, which is a typical reproductive pattern seen in many mammals. Males may have engaged in territorial displays or even physical altercations to assert dominance and mating rights at these times in order to gain access to females. Around 2.5 million years ago, during the Pleistocene era, Thylacosmolus went extinct. The Earth underwent substantial climate changes during the Pleistocene, including the beginning of glaciations and periods of extreme cold known as ice ages. These climatic changes would have affected vegetation patterns, which would have impacted Thylacosmolus's access to adequate habitats and prey. The ecosystems on which Thylacosmolus depended may have been disturbed by the move towards cooler and drier temperatures, resulting in a drop in its food sources and overall population. Thylacosmolus preferred larger brevores like Toxodon and Macrochenia as prey. Therefore, changes in their distribution and population could have contributed to its extinction. Thylacosmolus would have faced a shortage of its main food supplies if these herbivores declined as a result of environmental changes or other circumstances, which would have caused population reduction and eventual extinction. Thylacosmolus may have declined because of genetic causes including decreased genetic variety or greater vulnerability to illnesses. The species' chances of survival may have decreased due to a small gene pool, making it more susceptible to environmental changes or less able to adapt to new ecological settings. So this was all about Thylacosmolus, a deadly creature. If you want to get more such updates, hit the bell icon and subscribe to this channel. Also, let us know in the comment section how you find it. By knowing about unique species, we get an idea of how the world, climate, and wilderness was in historic times. We get to know about several new concepts we never knew ever existed. Did you know that there lived a creature weighing 1,500 to 2,500 kilograms? It was named Calicotherium. Click the video on your screen to know more about it.